Welcome, friends, to Tanked Up, the podcast all about video games and beer. I'm one of your hosts, Ben. It's episode 392. I had to check because last episode that we recorded was our Game of the Year episode. So that means it's a whole new year. And we've started on a really random number, I suppose, because it's the next one. I'm here with Lucy. It's 2024. <sighs> insane. Absolutely insane. Um, yeah. And we're yeah, we're here with Adam. <laughs> hey, how is everybody? Has everyone's years started off excellently? <laughs> Come on, Ben. That's... <laughs> I thought you were going to be like okay, and it's like yeah, but excellently. Has it been Has okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> excellently though. Like, <laughs> don't know what planet you're living on. Don't know what year you are in. Oh mate, you I'm. St- I was like, 2019, I think. Still, and I'm not sure it's ever going to be any different to that, is it? So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's open up some beers, shall we? Um, Adol, why don't you kick us off? Um, sure. Uh, I've brought a couple beers from the Canadians. Mm. Um, and this one is from Village Brewing in Calgary. It's uh, called Misheard Lyric. And it's a New England IPA, 7%, 473 mil can. Uh, what's your favorite Misheard Lyric? Tell us at Village Brewery. There uh, mm, are some good ones that um, people note. Yeah, Montegreens, right? Yeah. That's the name of the, the phenomena, the acoustic phenomena. No idea. Oh, no, so, I don't know either. I didn't know had an actual term. Uh, Everything's not a term. Mondo these Green days. is a mishearing or misinterpretation of a phrase in a way that gives a new meaning, often created by people listening to a poem or song. Lesser at being unable to hear a lyric, clearly substitutes words that sound similar and make some kind of sense. Uh, American writer Sylvia Wright coined the term in 1954, recalling oh, wow. a childhood memory of her mother reading the Scottish Ballad of the Bonnie Earl of Murray. Miss Hearing laid him on the green as Lady Mondegreen. Ah. Uh, okay. Uh, there's all, uh, yeah, there's, there's the standard ones, but I, I'll stop reading the thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, excuse me while I kiss this guy versus excuse me while I kiss the sky. From uh, Purple Haze. That's the, that's the perennial classic. Mm, mm. Oh, yes, 7% Nipah. Nice. Uh, Lucy, what are you drinking? Um... I'm drinking a no alcohol beer that's been sat in the stash, and I was like, okay. "These need to be drank because they've been sat there for a long time <laughs> since like last January." Oh wow! Right, January uh, 2023. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, maybe not this one. Um, hold on. Best before C base of the can. Uh, uh, I don't know what that is, but I think it says 2023. But so, <laughs> we'll find uh, out it momentarily. Yeah, so we'll see what a, a non-alcoholic beer uh, that's been sat down for far too long tastes like. Uh, this is the Mash Gang Northern Monk. Oh yeah, uh, collaboration. I, I don't think it specifically has a name. I tried to look for a name. Doesn't have one. The beer with no name. That's what I'm calling it. Yeah, it's um, a A non-alcoholic beer for people that don't do non-alcoholic beers. Generous dosing of New World hops in part flavour, aroma, and assertive bitterness. A satisfying body with a balanced malt bill. Brew to strength. Uh, oh, brew to strength naturally with premium craft ingredients with our friends Northern Monk. So, yeah. Oh, I'm not doing dry January, but these need... <laughs> Fair. So you thought you'd try Marvel it for the yeah yeah for the yeah more than pouring it down the sink. Yeah, <laughs> fair, fair. Um, I'm doing I'm well again I'm not doing dry January I'm I'm doing kind of reduced January, mm. um, but I did see a alcohol free beer from Arbor in the shop mm. the other day. So this is uh, from Arbor. It's called Wish You Were Beer. Um, and it's a oh, gluten-free, no, alcohol-free, hoppy pale oh, ale. It is 0.5%. Um, they give me the flavor text of gluten and alcohol-free pale ale brewed with citra and mosaic hops. That's it. That's all they tell me. Um, but in a big, big old red can. Um, so, yeah, I thought I'd try that. You know, loads of alcohol-free beers from breweries who don't specialize in it, and even ones that do specialize in it aren't very good so let's see what arbor can do 
Um, I don't think I've got a date or anything on it. This may have been in the shop for a, a, a little while. I don't think it's a, um, you know, I don't think it's a this January release. So it was canned in November. So that's not too old. That's good. We'll roll back round then. Adel. Billage. Billage Brewery, was it? Billage. Billage Brewery, yep. Uh, yeah, it's a very clever logo of two beer bottles mm. clinking, making a V. Nice. Um, okay, it is nice. And, it's a New England IPA. It's nice and hazy. Uh, it poured with quite a thick head that still hasn't dissipated. I don't think it might be a little too bright, but you can mm. kind of see the peaks and valleys. It's quite a vol voluminous head. I don't know how to describe it. You know, it's a thick head that is not like dissipating in one clean level quickly. So it's got... It smells hmm, a bit of pine, uh, some slight tropical, maybe a touch of citrus. Oh, that's refreshing. I mean, it's exactly not for the jet lagged, feeling groggy. It's been rainy in Britain since I got here. <laughs> um, definitely not the beer for that. Right. Uh, mood, but maybe that'll help me wake up just in time to already feel like I should be waking up, be awake, okay. and not sleep well. <laughs> I'm secretly hoping the two beer beers today will help me um, fall asleep, but I know that alcohol will and doesn't help you stay asleep. So uh, we'll see what the wash happens. Mm. Uh, to the hop forwardness. Um, as I've had a couple sips, the resiny piney flavors sticking around, and and it's really luscious on the finish. Not too heavy, but just like giving it like an, an, a a light intensity. Okay. And then the um, yeah, the tropical is further back. Um, yeah, it's I I would say it's a little. It's coming close to your quintessential Nipah, but with this sort of piney, resiny backbone that presents itself at the end of the taste curve and sits on the finish that just gives it a nice, unique flavor that mm. instead of just being the, um, the like a quintessential Nipah, it has a unique character, but doesn't stray too far from what you'd want a Nipah to be, because I think, I think we'd commented a bit in the last few months of the year that we we're having quite a few beers that had were good but also their names didn't really line up like they were quite far from the quintessential type so it's nice to have something that just like oh it's what i expect but still have a unique character it's a, nice. it's a nice balance between those two good good yeah. um just to uh let the people let the people know on the video my internet did crap out at a certain point so some of that on the video version of adult's description won't exist because it didn't come through to my machine so if you want to know everything you said go and listen to the audio version of the podcast uh lucy it's definitely an evening for it it's indicative of how we are as humans for the first episode back to be a little bit choppy that's mm. um, yeah but lucy we'll come to you yeah it's actually really nice. It, oh, good. Because it, it tastes like sparkling water. I think all the flavor's gone. Um, <laughs> and I don't actually like sparkling water. It's a bit too carbonated for me. I, mm. I just like, why wouldn't you just drink normal water? Whereas this tastes like... It is, it's, very, it's very crisp. So mm -hmm. it's really, 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 really refreshing. Mm-hmm. So it tastes like sparkling water. In fact, that I don't know, it just tastes like it, it, the carbonation in sparkling water just feels so harsh to me. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is paired back in my brain, but probably just as, if not more, carbonated. So okay. it's kept its carbonation. But yeah, I think the flavor's gone. Unless it had no flavor to begin with, I can't even remember. <laughs> but yeah, it tastes like a really nice sparkling water. Cool. Like no flavor, but <laughs> really crisp and refreshing and yeah have you um stumbled upon uh, hop waters yet in your neck of the woods 
No. No. Okay. Try and track. So, Abby Dale's made a couple new ones, uh, another run of them that were available briefly before I left. Uh, so that might be another thing I try and pick up and send to you guys because the hop waters apparently they're a thing in, in North America as well, in some places. But you just sort of reminded me of that with the idea of like it's like a sparkling water that tastes kind of mm -hmm. it's a bit beery, and so I'd be curious how something like a, a an overaged a low al no alcohol beer versus yeah. a hop water ends up yeah, comparing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this taste at the end, it's got a light, slightly um, metallic taste to it at the end. It's only its only just, it's very small, so it's not as off-putting as when you get some like really dirt cheap, cheaply made like um, IPAs, you know? Mm. Um, no, this has just have got a little bit of, a little bit of something at the end, but um, in terms of overall flavour... Doesn't have much, as I say, but but I am enjoying it because it's very, it's really refreshing. It tastes like sparkling water. Right, that I can get on board with. So yeah, good. Um, mm -hmm. I I did think we we have had this on the podcast before, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually, Lucy, yeah, you, you had it on episode three hundred and fifty four, which was last January. Mm -hmm. uh, so if people want oh, yeah. thoughts about the beer when it was, you know closer to when it was brewed if it's from a similar yeah. kind of batch yeah. or a slightly fresher episode to uh listen in yeah. Yeah. cool it's like it's like, it's like a, a lighter tonic it's, it's nice right. it's nice yeah, yeah maybe just throw some gin in it or something <laughs> nice well uh. i did i did go to the pub earlier um mm. and i did have some um clean head which is the beer from da, 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 Bristol Beer Factory. Uh, no, uh, the other one. I don't remember. More? Um, New Bristol uh, Brewery? The other, the, other, the other Bristol Brewery. Uh, the ones with the bottles? <laughs> uh, it is Bristol Beer Factory. No, it is Bristol Beer Factory. Okay. There we go. I don't know why I thought it was somewhere different. Um, and, you know, on, on, on draft, it's it's a pretty good beer. Um, it's lagery. It's fine. Um, it's better than most macro lagers. Um, but continuing on with my alcohol free day today. Um, yeah. Arbor Wish You Were Beer. Brought from almost next door to the pub. Um, oh, no. It was incredibly, like when it came out of the, the, the can, you can see how pale um, it is. A little, little touch orange in the um, in the glass. But when it came out, it, it basically like fizzed like a lemonade mm would kind of do a little kind of bubbles a little bit of carbonation but it just fizzed and disappeared really really quickly off the top of it um we have a reasonable nose there's quite a lot of flavor in this nose it's maybe a little bit sort of more a little bit fruity but maybe a little bit like strawberry that i'm getting off of this but maybe also slightly peachy as well somewhere around that kind of like Mm. maybe sort of lighter stone fruit and lighter sort of berry kind of uh, nose off of it but you know a reasonable nose for, for a beer like this mm. and I'm, I'm gonna I mean I'm, I'm almost gonna come straight to what you said Lucy um, but it's it, it's it is like sparkling water you know, yeah. there's, there's no body to this mm. whatsoever um it, it, it is it does edge and i know it is a hoppy pale ale as they call it uh, but it edges more towards that really light lager kind of end of viscosity and body and, and that sort of stuff and there's a bit of carbonation in there as well which gives a little bit of push to some of those flavors and they are very similar to uh, um, what was in the nose you know it's a, it is a stone fruit kind of bit there's a, there's a lot of peach on this maybe just a little sweetness i don't know if it is quite strawberry but there's a little bit of sweetness in there as well and then a very very slight bitterness right on the end um which goes pretty quickly and leaves those fruit flavors which last just a little bit longer as well um but it's very easy to drink um, it is, I think, as we expect from alcohol-free beers now, not in the same realms as beer in terms of its mm. body and mm. the level of flavour. 
um, the kinds of flavors that you're kind of getting. But you know, it, it, it is edging more towards it. It's, it is, you know, probably one of the closer goes at this to a to a pale. You know, if they'd have said this was a three and a half percent pale ale and it had just a little bit more body to it, yeah, absolutely. This is yeah. really, really close to that. Um, so I would drink it and stay hydrated, mm -hmm. I suppose, throughout the episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I was just thinking uh, one of my uh, well, resolutions is just to... I drink a lot of water anyway, but probably mm -hmm. should drink more. <laughs> I'm just thinking, yeah, this contributes. Yeah. This is like, instead of having a cup of tea or just water, I mean, it's just... Absolutely. You know, have this. <laughs> it would be very interesting to know what that 0.5% does um, mm. in terms of, you know, because mm. even even having something like a squash, as soon as you put something in water, it it, it kind of pulls it away from being as um, hydrating as just a, as just a mm -hmm. glass of water kind of is, you mm -hmm. know, as soon as you put those sugars and those kinds of things into it. So it'd be really interesting to see what where this stacks up. Is it the same as having yeah. like a glass of squash or you know uh, a, a, a tonic water or something like that in terms of what it's actually giving to you yeah. uh, i'm sure there's got to be, yeah there's got to be something out there which tells us that we'll have a look at some but the stein nice okay. just to just to, to refresh between um beery sips uh good let's jump into some games then um how's everyone's few weeks off been? Have we had a huge amount of time to play anything or experience any gaming events with family? Things. Okay, yeah. Um, I played some tabletop gaming and some video gaming with friends and family in nice. that order. Um, I played a lot of Magic um, with my nerdy friends in, in Calgary and that was great. And it was like um, it's very interesting piloting a deck you haven't you know, you, you like a lot. There's two very. Um, but it was very interesting to be like, nah, give me another one. I just like pretty much kind of refused to play a deck more than once. I played one deck twice, but it was just like, well, I'm never going to learn these well enough to be like, to know what to do. So fuck it. Just give me a new one. Let me, let me figure out. And I, I learned a lot about interestingly how my friends think and play um mm. and what makes them sour and what kind of nonsense they like <laughs> doing just by playing their decks being like oh you put this weird card in or this oh you put this combo in neat i know i now just need to not give away that i can win next turn because i see this weird connection like oh mm. you're one of these players you're a rube goldberg combo person like me um <laughs> <laughs> So that was fun. Uh, and then I played a game that I know we're a video game podcast, but Rival Restaurants, which apparently was kickstarted a few years ago. Right. And it's a weird time. You each get a cook, chef, and a restaurant. You're trying to get 20 likes on Yelp, basically. And you do that by acquiring ingredients and then making the recipe. And depending on the recipe type, it's either simple or fancy. Um, it'll have a certain number of likes, uh, and the recipe will have garbage, and you can only get really good garbage somewhere on the board. And the rest of the board is basically four shops of ingredients, and like meat will be two hundred a piece, and like veg will be one hundred. And then there's a fancy shop that has extra stuff. Anyway, what's interesting is everyone just kind of does stuff at the same time. So there's like a right. phase of you, everyone picks where they're going to go on the board. And then Sounds there's like the... overcooked. Yeah, it kind of <laughs> is, except oh. everyone is making their own recipes in their own restaurant. But then in the buy and barter phase, you go to the if you go to a store, you can then just spend the money to buy the ingredients. But you can also be like, hey, you're in that store. I'll give you a hundred bucks to buy that set of peppers through you. Right. So I'll pay you the purchasing price and you give me the peppers. Or, and someone might be like, nah, give me 200. I know you'll finish your, like, ingredient for that. Um, and you can always, like, the there's cards that flip. So there's four of each type on a shelf. And at the end of the day, the thing in the fourth position dies because it's been the shelf the longest and everything shuffles across. But you can also just buy from off the shelf 
and you don't know what it is, a random card. So if you really need an ingredient, you can just be like, hey, if I give you a hundred bucks, or can I just buy through you? And as soon as that person says yes, you just throw all your money away to try and get that linchpin ingredient. Right. Um, but everyone's doing it at the same time. And if you both go to the same store, you have to figure out who's getting what thing in that store. And if you both want something and can't make a deal, it goes to auction. <laughs> okay. um, but And then after that, there's a cooking phase where if you have all your ingredients, you could you could choose to cook the recipe and then you get the likes and then you'll... Each store has a certain set of superpowers that, like, there's three stages be between 1 and 20 that give you a bonus. And so you'll kind of snowball ahead, potentially. Uh, but people will love. If you are already on stage 2, like you're at 15 likes of 20, people are probably not going to wheel and deal with you. And then they'll use their action cards to, like, hurt you. But it was just really fun. And I just wanted to bring oh, it up because I've good. never seen one of these games yeah. where you're kind of all frenzied do no one is tracking what, whether you're, there's no honesty tracking, right? Because everyone's doing everything at the same time. You mm. like, which is great because, but like no one can watch you. They don't have the time. So you're just doing your own thing and, and everyone's just throwing money down, picking it up, buying their ingredients. And you're just assuming things are, everyone's on the level. But the only reason for that is because it's this nice, it gives this nice frenetic energy and there's no waiting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. except for when someone, literally the moments where someone's like, okay, I am now in the cooking phase cooking my recipe and I need to do these actions. And so people pay attention to see what, whether it'll affect them. That's the only point. Otherwise it's, you're kind of, everyone's always doing something, which is really neat. Cause it's like a competitive game that kind of feels cooperative. Cause you're not mm. like sitting around watching someone mm -hmm. win. Nice. So yeah. Anyway, like the board game. Game. Apparently they're about to kickstart their second expansion. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd give that. So rival restaurants. Yeah, it sounds um, like the board game version of the bear or something. I think they could just slap the the bear. The brunt. Yeah, have you not seen it or heard of oh, that geez. program? It's oh, good. yeah, I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. So. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Good. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was my quick thing, and the other things is my niece and nephew who got their Switch like a year and a half ago or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, they have Mario Party. Uh, and they. How, how did this happen? Uh, so who who went wrong? I didn't buy it for them. You'd have been a bad uncle if you had. <laughs> no. Um, uh, and so we played Mario Party a couple times, and they were... Oh, I'm um, so sorry to hear that. <laughs> they definitely knew some of the mini games, and were like, ah, oh, this one. It was really nice, because I haven't played the Switch Mario Party, and so it's nice when my niece and nephew are explaining shit to me. Mm. Um, but I, what I did get them for um, the holiday season uh, was Wario, the new WarioWare. And, and that's perfect for a 13 and a 10 year old yeah <laughs> uh it was so much fun and it was so ridiculous and they got their parents to play for a bit and so it's all about starting in certain poses like oh a yeah that's the one that uses the uh... like kawaii yeah. pose mm. and uh the plot's okay the plot is very ridiculous for, for a warrior war game um but mostly we played the we just went through the they've got like four different types of non-plot game so there's one that's kind of like mario party where there's a really tiny board and you're just going through but the person who gets the finish line gets 150 points so they'll probably win unless mm -hmm. they really sucked at all the games and then there's a really interesting one called follow the doctor which is essentially simon says um but what happens is it gives you a um you have to do a mini game you maybe one or two people but it'll be like while also doing this, and then it'll be like yelling, uh, asking what's for dinner, or yelling your favorite food, or something, like that, or, or like hop, doing hopscotch. And then afterwards, it asks, did the person do that? And then you have an opportunity to give thumbs up. And it turns out that a huge part of your points at the end of the game is how many thumbs ups you earned. Ah. But that meant that me being like, uh, ADHD gamer boy when I was like oh yeah that person did that I was like and when I did stuff they were like click 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 and I was like when I did all the I followed all the actions but I only got like 17 points and you guys got a hundred because I was hammering on things um, so that was really fun I liked the idea that the game couldn't track all the stuff right it, it was dependent on outside input and that mattered mm -hmm. Uh, and then there was one that's just like a set of mini games, and then they're like 
there's a weird one that's like you have to push a button to run forward uh, and then a snake might come in front of you and attack you and then you go into a mini game. Um, but also Medusa's at the front and you're trying to slay Medusa. But if she turns around and you don't stop and you don't move, you will get um, calcified. And you have one free potion to uncalcify, but if you get calcified twice, you're done. If you lose a mini game, the snake holds you back. And so the, the first one to the end to slay Medusa wins. Um, but it took a while to figure that out because it's when a snake comes up and attacks you, you play a mini game. And so you kind of all play the mini games together, but you might be you're at different places on the 200 meter dash that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and it took a while to figure out, but that was a neat version. But ultimately, they just wanted to play the board game one or the mini game after mini game. You have four lives when you lose four mini games, you're out. Last one standing. But it was just. Fun. Uh, it was interesting to see them play the plot because in the plot you use two Joy Cons, okay. and it's way more accurate. And there's other there's m some poses that need them. Like there's one that's called like the crocodile, where you go like this yeah. and you open the crocodile mouth. And with one men uh, Joy Con, it, it definitely glitched out a couple times because uh, obviously with four players you just each have one Joy Con, mm. and so it has to. It just assumes you are putting your other hand some places. Um, <laughs> And with when they were playing the plot, and they were playing because it's maximum two players, they were using two Joy Cons, and suddenly they were a couple of those mini games popped up, and they had no problem with it. But it right. just didn't because they're you know holding things not quite parallel and perpendicular, kind of like that. But if you have two together, it can triangulate better. But with one, it just sort of goes off into the ether. So anyway, WarioWare still great, dumb dumb games with weird weird shit. It's very Japanese, <laughs> and I love it. I not played Borrower for years and years. Mm. Yeah, interesting. I played the first one. Um, uh, while waiting for breakfast with my buddy Henry, because we went for breakfast like a year and a half, maybe even two years ago, and it, it was there, were, and he brought his Switch because he always had it around because mm. he has two kids, uh, and he's like, "Oh, I got the new WarioWare. You want to play?" I'm like, "I haven't played a WarioWare game in like ten years or whatever." And we were playing on the on the Switch, and it was fine. Um, mm. This one seems a little more put together. Um, yeah. Especially for kids who aren't who are new to the franchise, it has a like. The premise is Wario wins a, a, a trip to an island, and takes all his WarioWare friends, who I barely know who they are, right? But uh, a WarioWare aficionado. So, but that's how you yeah. get all the people on the island. But the island has these a weird god and a, a tribal culture and there's these these what i really like is the plot is like he you're traveling around the island and you're meeting things and then it it, and you get this tutorial about the the magic stones i can't remember what they're called but they're literally the joy cons but then it has this like narrator voice being like kind of like um almost like an anthropologist being like slash a story and be like and this is the pose that represents when the god did this to save the people and so you go like this with the, like a crocodile and you and you hold the magic stones blah 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 but they're just literally stone joy cons like they have the little nubbin for the joystick <laughs> but they're not pretending at all they, they look like joy cons yeah. and it's it's really cute because WarioWare is dumb and silly, and so it's a really great wrapping to get people to like unlock stuff and do levels. Mm -hmm. Nice, mm -hmm. yeah. Good, good. Um, Lucy, yeah. did, you, did mm. you manage to play anything? You know, you've been in a little bit of a sort of, you know, I, I yeah. haven't really wanted to play a huge amount. But is there anything you wanted to to chat about at all? Uh, I've now started. Uh, deeming Call of Duty as my mental health game. That's how I'm gonna get around the many hours that I put into it. Right. Because I would play Power Wash Simulator because um some mm. free DLC came out for Christmas. But I just get motion sick so quickly playing that. Mm. Um so it's like I I'm enjoying it but also suffering through Power Wash Simulator as I play it. So yeah, uh, Call of Duty is my uh mindful game. Mm. I just play my my brain turns off and it's like don't think about anything else. Nice. So that's yeah. how I'm justifying it. So yeah, I played more Call of Duty, um, but uh, no, it was Saturday. So uh, Thursday, two days ago, um, I played Super Mario 
Bros. Wonder? Is that what it mm -hmm. is? Super yeah. Mario Bros. Wonder? Yeah. Um, Super Mario I... Wonder, yeah, whatever it's called. That was my um, game I wanted to play more, I think. In our top <sighs> games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, you certainly mentioned it. And I'm playing it uh, with my nephew. Yeah, he's, he's already started playing the guy for Christmas, though. So. Right. I don't know what world or level we well I started with him because I think he's been playing it with his mom. So mm. I'm playing it through, um, well, through a child's eyes, I guess. But um, it's it. What I like about it is that you can basically just cheat in that game. Like you know, my nephew would grab my controller and be like. Oh, let me, you know, once I got hit and he was like, let me give you the power up. And I'm like, okay, I don't need it, but you're the boss. So, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> here, you, you just give me the, uh, the, the power, you know, the, um, oh, sorry. How old is he? Uh, five. Um, so yeah, it's like, here's a mushroom and this and like, so, so you can just basically just cheat in that game and do what you want. And it's, it's, I like that it's child friendly. It's a lot less. Uh, infuriating and say like uh, 3D world was to play with him. Mm. Like I enjoy it and I I like seeing, you know, him him learn and struggle through things and then get better at it and mm. uh, adapt to it. But it just seems. I mean, I'm kids grow up so quick, so I shouldn't be surprised. But I am just still impressed at how you know much better he is every time I see him play a game with him. Um, but this is just, yeah, I think it's, I know a lot of people have complained about the co-op, but I think that's more when they're playing with maybe adults, and it's like, mm. they both want that level playing field, but playing it with a child and playing games with children can be very infuriating. This seems to mitigate a lot of that frustration, so that's good. Nice. Um, in terms of the actual game... Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like no offense, Adil, but it's like it seems like a Mario game for people who have ADHD, because <laughs> which uh, you know, a, a small child who has a attention span of maybe a few seconds, it's great because there's like a new idea, a new set of things in each level, and it seems like it's just spread out so thin that mm -hmm. it has all these different. Oh, this enemy, that enemy, this concept, that concept, which is, I think, great from like a creative point of view. It's like, look how much they packed in here. But as a game that I would personally want to play, it just doesn't do it for me because it's like, I like Super Mario Bros. 3, mm -hmm. where it's just about the platforming. You know, there's probably like seven different sprites in that game, and that's it. <laughs> and everything else is about the level design and the you know precision platforming whereas this is it's very much in that um super mario odyssey kind of mold where it's like look how many creative ideas we have and it's like mm. yeah that's cool couldn't you've like drilled down and into a few of them and made them a bit more challenging and just made those things really good it seems like you know throw the kitchen sink at, at it kind of game mm. and it's like it's incredibly polished and it's incredibly charming and creative, but it's just not the kind of Mario game that I would like or want. It seems like a Mario game made for the modern child who has instant gratification, everything's given to them, no attention span, and that's it. No offense. <laughs> I mean, so the thing is, I only played it like that one or two yeah. sessions, right? Once mm -hmm. with Keith and once without, and so yeah. I... I I actually can't comment on that longevity being the, the case, and yeah, no, no offense taken. Um, <laughs> even if I end up loving the game, but like I yeah. will say, I haven't gone back to it mm. uh, in a way that other mm. Mario gripped me, but also games don't grip me the same. Yeah, um, but like I think what what I liked about the game was the feel of it. Reminding me of yeah, the other games. Yeah, but the problem with that is, I could also just play the other games if I paid Nintendo yeah. 17 million yeah. yen a month or whatever they want for but my you, the ability to play ROMs. Yeah. Um, but you made the point where it's like it's sort of like uh, Super Mario World more so than it is like free. And yes. it's like, yeah, because, and that's why I'm not a massive, 
I like World, don't get me wrong, but it's certainly not my favorite. Because well, three's my favorite. I just yeah. I'm I'm saying I'm glad it's like world and not worse, mm-hmm. right? Let's not yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. No, I got you when you were saying that. And but whereas I, world is just more about okay, look at all the different secrets we have in the world, look at all these different you know, it's very colourful, it's sort of very creative, just like this game is. And it's like, no, I just want the pure platforming right yeah experience Mm -hmm. what makes worlds the people who love world love it because of trying to get 96 stars and that has to do with like unlocking crap and finding different things yeah aren't necessarily directly related to your platforming prowess no so what yeah so like super mario brothers 3 has a higher pp score than super mario world and this one probably has a lower on them both yeah it's, it's like why I'm um, <laughs> prowess from now on, by the way. Please do. It's like everyone in Liza P, and apparently there's a P organ in it, and I'm just like, that's very good. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, the yeah, it ironically makes the platforming easier. Uh, <laughs> it's sort of like the new Donkey Kong games where it's like everything just seems to slow down the action, mm. whereas in the uh super nintendo ones it just felt more fluid and fast and mm-hmm. like platforming and just going but um yeah as i say i think it's a really well made game you know it's nintendo what do you expect the the you know it's the it's their tentpole franchise but yeah it, it's 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 I, mm, <laughs> just like yeah. I, i'm genuinely wondering if i would enjoy it playing it by myself i enjoy right. playing with him because as i said like we played that for god it was like 10 hours straight and i was obviously yeah. having a good time with it if mm. that's the longest i've played a video game for a certain stretch of time mm. or god knows how long so yeah i enjoyed it um then we had to play mario kart i don't know how we found out about <laughs> the dlc God, Wait, that crap. Um, I hate Mario Kart. It just plays itself. I was like, because he was like, I was like, I need ten minute break between Mario Wonder <laughs> and Mario Kart, please, because my eyes are gonna fall out. You play on your own. He was like, no, no, no. I was like, you play on your own, it'll be fine. And guess what? He still played two player. I was not touching my Joy-Con. Still managed to come like seventh in the race, not even touching anything. And it's like. <laughs> They suck. Mario Kart sucks, and it has that's since the only good one is the Super Nintendo one. The rest of yeah, awful. that one's great. So that's mm-hmm. the one that makes you think that Mario Kart's great, and then you play the yeah. other one. You're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. This I is mean, a bad franchise. I will say, um, for like now that my niece is thirteen, mm-hmm. I think the Mario Kart charm will probably wear off. But like, I bought them Mario Kart. Um, when they got their switch like uh yeah. they yeah. my their parents were like we think we're gonna buy a switch we have no idea what the fuck is going on with video <laughs> games what should we do i'm like i will buy the mario kart and mm-hmm. here are a couple other games you can buy them um and it's interesting because you can tell they don't but they do not have much time like they've had a switch for over a year and they clearly like don't play it much which right. is like no. wild considering the like when we, even when like my sisters when we were young we played aladdin and lion king and a couple other games that like we all played together mm-hmm. and like at their age they my sisters were better at games and i'm like but they're okay that's fine but they also like have rich fruitful lives and they've got their cabin in north saskatchewan on a lake and I'm like yeah i wouldn't fucking make... i'd kayak probably <laughs> uh, it's just really interesting to see like how non-indoor or they're indoor kids, but not tech indoor kids. Right. They love, they love reading, they love yeah. doing art and stuff, and their parents have been very good about giving them access to things, and it's just yeah. like, oh, if I had a Switch when I was their age, especially, well, with, the, especially with the undiagnosed ADHD and all the bright flashing <laughs> colors, good lord. Yeah. Wait, you're saying I could sneak it into bed from the living room and <laughs> I, play? Uh, like, fuck that, I would. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My, no, that is my nephew, because... I had parental controls on my phone for a while, mm. and then it was like, oh, monthly summary. I was like, oh, okay. I didn't. I, f- I forgot those happened. It's like, 
30 days paid on my old what, what monster have I created? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, yes. I mean, this was part of the plan. He was meant to be a nerd. So. Nice. Yeah. No, but it, it, like, I see some other kids playing some right trash and garbage, and it's just like, that's why I wanted to give him this, because it's like, at least you know these games. As cynical oh. as they are, and as, as a Nintendo are, and it's like, you know, the nostalgia comes for us all, and we're, we're all in the tight grasp of Mario, his sweaty Italian hands, <laughs> and we cannot <laughs> escape. Well but <laughs> they're not made in a very cynical fashion where it's all about coins and this and that and gambling mechanics and it's like and you know to see them problem solve and figure things out and get better with the controls it is mm. it's good it's good so you know i'm i wouldn't be someone who's like worried that he's playing every day if it's mm -hmm. only for a couple of hours so yeah. yeah. Did it look like those that pearl clutching um did you see that 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 news Sky News reporter? Yeah. You saw yeah. it then. That was oh, oh, I was was like, oh. oh I can't remember the, what she there's said. this um yeah, there's this thirteen year old kid. I think it was in the I mean, States. That sounds like, yeah, in the States. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he basically completed Tetris, which oh, only fuck, yeah, no, I almost put I meant to put yeah. that in the chat. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah which, the first uh, human to complete to hit the the kill screen border. Yeah, yeah which yeah. is insane. But I don't know this Sky News thing. <laughs> oh, it, this woman was. She really wanted crazy. to bring this up uh, because I forgot I actually yeah. played games over the, as my art, like mm -hmm. my topic, because it's super interesting how this method of the method of input on a controller has changed the way, like tapping was a yeah, thing I, and then I, rolling I was a thing. Yeah. All right, so let, let me. Sorry, I know what the content of the article is. You guys do, but I've realized that we haven't actually explained to the listeners. So why don't you finish saying the thing, and then we can talk about how the thing I was well, going to say. But yeah, I also well, know what the Sky News thing is. As you said, thirty-year-old kid, the only person in history to complete Tetris, where basically the code just freezes and no more lines come yeah. down. It only previously done by a robot. He managed to do it, which is. You know, insane. Look how many people have been trying to do this for what, forty um, years or something. I think so gaming it's incredibly it, it, mm. gaming outlets basically like the headlines were prodigy complete. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's that yeah. much of a big deal. Yes, it is. It's massive. But um, even if we we found that context, um, basically the Sky News reporter was just reporting on it, and they showed a clip of him, and he's like you know, overcome with, like, joy and happiness and sadness. I think his dad passed away, like, a few months prior to that, and he dedicated it to his dad and all that. But oh. even without that context, okay. the Sky News reporter, after the cliff, was like, she, she said something like, as a mother, I'd tell him to have take a deep breath, put the controller down, and go outside. Like, basically telling the kid to go touch grass. <laughs> I literally like, what, fucking touch grass. That was what was going on in my head when you said that. She, in so many words, she said that in a really sneering and condescending mm. way. And it's like, sometimes you expect that, but uh, just the kind of like, con, you know, condescension in her voice, in her mm. tone, it was just, it really rubbed me the wrong way. And someone was like, oh, don't go abuse this woman. And I... 99% of the time, I agree with that, but I was just like, I'm kind of a little bit happy that this woman is getting piled on now. <laughs> People well, going yeah, through Twitter like, and saying, like, you're horrible inside out and all that. A little bit of me. Games, video yeah. games, which yeah. a lot of people are her, I don't know how old she is, but let's just pretend that Probably she's... Probably 40s or something. Like that. Don't say 40s. Late 40s, 40s, early 50s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, say late. <laughs> late 40s. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, like, there is this idea that video games are like dumb, stupid toys that don't mean anything. But the problem is, it's a, it's a new. Your job is to report the news, and someone put this yeah. in front of you as the as news, and it's also like Tetris. That's real old. Someone did something <laughs> new with Tetris. You have to be a fucking idiot not to realize that that must be yeah. something interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. care if you care that like you think he should be playing outside or whatever you whatever you make your kids do, right? But, like, just the context alone should tell you that this isn't just, like, a 
oh, you know, my nephew beat some level on Battletoads, which also... <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, but like, yeah. I don't know, like, you don't have to yeah. care about video games to know that there's some, something interesting happened. That's why it's news. Mm -hmm. It's also something old and no one had done it before. All those facts together, you have to be bad at your job to not realize that this must be something interesting or it's special. Yeah. And like, and, also... and, and you're bad at your job adding, you know, your own personal commentary on it. Mm. When you, even you've seen news reporters would be like, what the hell did I just read? Why am I reading this? News is slow. But they mm -hmm. say it in their eyes. <laughs> and they just move on and they don't say anything and they don't add any other context. She could have just done that. She Absolutely. could have been like, anyway, the next story. Mm. Um, and, no, but no, didn't. she had to add, no, she, there was, you could tell it riled her in a, 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 in a very a concerning way where it's like god your children must be fun um anyway ah. yeah I, so i'm kind of glad she got she, she got a bit piled on and the internet will yeah. move on you know i don't it's, nothing it's, too extreme i don't believe in that but yeah like comment on a few of her tweets for the next six months about being being uh crappy so yeah i'm i'm yeah. cool with that because <laughs> that rubbed me the wrong way yeah. I think that's reasonable. I think just so sneering, you know. Yeah, well, it's more of like I don't know a lot of things. I don't know what makes certain things cool or interesting. And like sometimes, especially with social media, right? Instagram. I'm very confusing on Instagram. I get they don't know. I I they, I think Instagram thinks I'm like a a, a really oh, dissatisfied yeah. housewife sometimes because I get <laughs> um, a lot of yoga and mindfulness and like literally interesting <laughs> things about like re rejuvenating oneself spiritually and i'm like that ain't me motherfucker um and then i get the, the, a bunch of weird video game stuff like i get smosh reading am i the asshole posts i'm like i don't care about like nope none of this works i'm i'm algorithm proof apparently um, but anyway, like, I, yeah, uh, the algorithm's weird. You know, I've only just got it back to cat videos. It, it went on the tangent for a while. So, <laughs> the, I'm glad the it's now just cat videos. Like, well, the one thing I do is I don't comment on these things that I don't give a shit about because I don't want to yuck anyone's yum. Yeah. This thing has a million fucking views. Clearly, people mm. like it. And that's the thing that I don't really respect, especially when you're like, in a position of like reporting the news and you you're just sneering and you're you mm -hmm. don't get it and instead of being like i don't get it i'll just say this you're yeah. like punching down a 13 year old kid who did a thing that apparently yeah, no one else in the world had ever done for in decades <laughs> when a 13 year old kid does something no one else has done for decades and people have been trying shut the fuck up yeah absolutely yeah i don't care if it's yeah. you know anything <laughs> Yeah, even if you think it's lame or whatever, you know, like, just shut up. Yeah. <laughs> just shut up and be professional and, you know, you're, the, you're there to read the news, not give little anecdotes about your kids and what your fantastic parenting style is. Like, it was so, it was so layered, like, <laughs> that, that statement. Just like, yeah, I know everything about you now and what kind of person and mother you are <laughs> just from that one statement. <laughs> And my kids would not be playing with yours because yep. they'd be like, "Oh, why doesn't why don't they do ballet, mother? Why don't they do um, uh, the ballet? Why don't they play the violin?" It's yeah. probably not. It's it's not fancy things, right? It's like middle of the road things that that she approves of, and video games are for nerds and dweebs, and mm. like okay. it's like playing lacrosse and field hockey. A game of rugger. Go, go out on the field and throw the ball around. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My children play polo. Yeah. yeah. They have their own horses. <laughs> Let's not drag yeah. this lady anymore. Or we might do next week. We'll come back to you next week. Drag her some more. Yeah, um, we don't want to yuck her husband's yum. <laughs> yeah. uh, Adam, you've got a second beer. What are you going to we be doing? We do have a second beer. Does anyone else have a second beer? Nah. I don't even have one beer, right. so I, you know. I wouldn't subject myself to a second one of these. Oh right, I mean you're on <laughs> not twice. You're both doing the fizzy waters. <laughs> yeah, fizzy waters. Uh, so this is um, from the Growlery Beer Company. In oh, that's excellent. 
I love that name. Uh, look at that. Nice. Oh, the, oh, I like that bit. It's the Golden Ticket Vietnamese Coffee Stout. 6.5%, 473 mils. Coffee provided by TRW Orient Coffee. That's a little bad. Um, fruit in collaboration like with our local pal CRW Orient Coffee. This stout is no shy guy. Bold roasting notes reminiscent of its ancestor brew and finished with highly arom aromatic locally roasted Vietnamese coffee. This beer is velvety, velvety smooth with some lactose added for sweetness. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what, are you lactose intolerant or something? No, I'm vegan. Uh, you can look at it. Ah, oh, nerds. Just drink it. Um, <laughs> I'm going to put vegan. The... I'm just um, going to pack it. <laughs> fuck this. Yeah. So, I mean, again, I'm not against... This is a market voting thing. I've already poorly voted the market. Mm -hmm. uh, for anyone who cares about my vegetarianism and veganity, uh, it's very much about good life, good death, good economic impact, good environmental impact. I clearly screwed up by buying something with lactose. It's done. I could throw it away or give it away, but I'll just have it now, and everyone yeah. can judge me for being a bad vegan. I don't the, care. The cow forgives you. Or the goat or whatever... Milk. It's it, it, oh, it, it is an interesting. I figured it's it interesting. out by the name actually. No, yeah. because Vietnamese oh. coffee is of course famously really fine grained and poured into through their little porta filter thing into a glass that has sweetened condensed milk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's oh. the way it's yeah. served. Uh, of course, it's got lactose. How else are you going to get that milky sweetness? Right. Yeah, I was uh, going to ask you if you liked Vietnamese coffee. This is well, I Vietnamese. Love it and I miss it. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize I missed it because there's not a lot of Vietnamese here. No, yeah. not in Bristol. No, I, I, or whatever. No. There's there's a Vietnamese coffee joint that I found out about uh, this week in Birmingham. So mm. a jewelry quarter. So maybe I can go there and just um, post uh, well, pictures I mean, yeah. and make a deal <laughs> jealous. He can, he can live vicariously through your images. You should have one and tell me what you think of it. Because yeah. you, we've had a lost <laughs> time, I think, episode yeah. where we talked <laughs> extensively about um, uh, about your more recent foray into coffee. Mm -hmm. That's coffee that I know some people really liked, even though they didn't like coffee, just because you mm -hmm. can you can moderate the bitterness and the coffee taste with how much sweetened condensed milk you put. Yeah, my worry was, God damn, that's a lot of sugar. Um, mm. <laughs> so. That would be a once in a very, very odd time kind yeah. of treat. Like <laughs> Before it, I go it, into a coma. Fine. I'd be curious mm -hmm. what you thought. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go one day. Nice. nice. It is Ooh. dark. Yeah. Lighthead. Oh, God, that's good smelling coffee. Almost <laughs> exclusively coffee notes with a hint of sweetness. Um, <laughs> like, I literally oh, just, it, it smells like a light coffee. Mm. And I think that's because it's a heavy coffee inside a beer. Yeah. Got a really weird mental picture of like a can of um, ready made espresso in a can of like lager, <laughs> like a coffee inside a beer. Sorry. Ooh. Uh, they, they should make that. <laughs> um, they have <laughs> weird anthropomorphic limbs in my mental picture oh, for no good. reason. Okay. Whatsoever. I, 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 Just scuttling I, I, about. No, that wasn't in my mental image when you described it to me. God, that's but really I'm good. sane, so, you know, mm. somewhat. Not very. Ooh. I'm really sad that I'll never be able to have this again. Um... <laughs> <laughs> never say never. Yeah, it's... Let's have it in secret. I s actually, <laughs> interestingly, I, I pointed out yeah. something that had lactose in it at one of these magic nights, and they're like, well, there's technically, like... There are lactoses that aren't from cows, like artificial lactoses. So I'm like, I'm pretty sure they would say that on the tin, my, my dude. Oh, sure. mm. Mm. Um, this is great. Uh, the coffee is really nuanced. I'm getting some interesting, slightly fruity notes from the coffee through the beer. Um, still has that accurateness of a coffee-based stout. So, like, in a way that, like, you can sometimes, if you just had that coffee, it might not have that accurateness. I think it's just the way it's processed. Um, the lactose is doing such a light, subtle touch, which I'm 
mildly surprised just because sweetened condensed milk, you would think they might put a lot more lactose just to get that sweetness up. But it's doing not too much, which makes me think that if you had a Vietnamese coffee from the CRW people, it would also be very good because mm -hmm. one of my complaints about Vietnamese coffee is when there's too much sweetened condensed milk, it just becomes a sweet slurry. Um, and I like the taste of coffee, and, and one, one of the reasons I drink it black is because it is very easy to tip past with sugar, the, the threshold where you get the nuance, the interesting tastes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've started to enjoy it. This is a very good coffee, coffee stout. And um, I think if I hadn't read the flavor text, I would have been blissfully unaware, and, it's, and the lactose is doing such light work, I might not have even thought about it mm. mm -hmm. um it leaves a really rich um slightly malty uh like a slight malt strong coffee finish um that doesn't last too long so i'm gonna keep reaching for it i could treat this like a coffee this is like, like either like the most problematic or the most ideal beer to have in the morning let's just say that <laughs> It's really I good. Um, ideal. Yeah. yeah. What the was the percentage? Rate. I'll have to look up more of their things. I'm also annoyed at the lady in the liquor store because uh, I, I went there and I asked for... I've had it on the podcast, Yukon Brewing Brewery's Espresso Stone, years and years ago. And I was like, oh, I'm in, I'm in Canada. Do you, do you carry Yukon? And they've done a rebranding since. Uh, and they no longer make the espresso stout. She's like, oh, wait, but here, this one's great. And in the middle of that conversation, I had mentioned I was vegan. Mm. <laughs> She's like, a sale's a sale. <laughs> yeah, I also don't blame her for not realizing that the Vietnamese coffee stout might have lactose in it, I should have checked. Um, but now I realize that's why I didn't look too closely, because mm -hmm. we talked about vegan beers, blah, blah, sure. blah, mm -hmm. and I was like, mm -hmm. I knew that the... Yukon one wasn't, and that's what, and do they, do you still have it? And she's like, oh, we have Yukon, but they've gone to much more modern. They used to have like very straightforward, like they had an amber and they had a red and they had, uh, I think a pale ale and the espresso stout and, you know, like they had a pretty straight, they were much more like a, I've, I've talked a lot about it, the like micro Canadian microbrew versus craft beer difference, right? They were much more <laughs> like a microbrewery where they had their steady menu. And the espresso stuff was just part of that and it was very good. Right. Um, anyway, this is great. Um, good. I will try and enjoy every last drop because I'll never have it again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely do. Um, I am going to very shortly bring up a topic um, mm -hmm. that won't quite see us out for the episode because um, we'll have a special, a special returning feature towards the end. Um, but before I get into our topic, I thought I would mention I've been playing God of War Ragnarok. Uh, mm -hmm. But, but, only through my now upped PlayStation Plus Premium subscription, which uh, I managed to get for seven quid because I had £10 of credit through PlayStation Stars, which is their Oh, know, yeah, their, uh, royalty uh, their royalty program. award kind mm -hmm. of program thing um i had 10 pound on that so to upgrade me for the rest of the year was like 17 pound 50 or 17 pound 30 or something so i paid the the, the seven pound something it's not uh, bad. to up it um but and i knew what i'm about to say is something that i did know and as soon as i realized i'm like i did know this um but <laughs> when i was flicking through the playstation store i kept seeing games like god of war with uh, the premium tag on the thumbnail mm. uh, Baldur's gate 3 mm. with the premium tag on the thumbnail and a few other games and it doesn't mean that they are there's another catalog there's not a premium catalog of games it just mm. means that you get access to game trials, which are just big demos. So yeah. essentially, yeah. these games, and Baldur's Gate 3 is one of them um, as well, you can play three hours of these games. And it's not a like vertical slice demo of it. It is just start the game and play the first three mm -hmm. hours of the mm -hmm. game, which is great for some games and is, is quite a good way to get a taster into some of the games. Mm -hmm. um, 
and all of your progress if, if i went and bought it from the store my progress goes you over all the, the, the the trophies that i've got go over as well you know everything yeah. stays yeah. with it um mm. and i could buy god of war in four years to ragnarok in four or five years time and forget what you played yeah absolutely all the controls like, and start it again anyway yeah, exactly <laughs> exactly i really like the idea that you would buy it in four years time and be like Oh, thank God the first three hours are done. I'm not going to redo those. <laughs> um, but it, 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 it kind of just adds a little... Or it takes away from the sting of my thought of being like, Oh, I get to play God of War. Oh, no, I don't. Okay, fine. But at least I get to play three hours. And what I've played so far is good. It, it's more mm -hmm. God of War. Um, it looks great. It looks fucking fantastic boy. on the PS5. Mm. Uh, yeah, there's. I don't think he said boy yet. Yeah. But as soon as I started up, the started the game up, Evan's like, "What's this?" I'm like, "Oh, this is Dad of Boy," and she's like, "It's God of War," and I'm like, "Yeah, you don't get that joke at all, do you?" Like, no idea what I'm about. Um, so it's well it's um it but it, it it's good, it's good so far. Um, I also as part of that uh, and as part of the premium tier is you can stream games now as well, not having to have them downloaded onto your machine. So I remembered and. Again, saw the thumbnail for Proteus, which you played last year a little oh, bit, yeah, Lucy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. I thought, oh, I'll have a quick go at that and uh, play through the first How level. Did that hold up? Um, it's good. It, streaming. I streaming. It, streamed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely no lag at all. Just, just That's brilliant. You know, really, really solid experience. Mm -hmm. uh, played mm. the first level through and I'm like, cool. I don't really need to play any more of this game. It seems like it's going <sighs> to be more of this. I'm fine yeah. with that. So, yeah. You play the first level, that is the game. Yep. And <laughs> yeah. what, what, I suppose what is nice about that is. I then don't have to fuck around with deleting the file off my machine or anything like that. I've just streamed mm. it and that's it. It's, mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. it's done. I never have to go back and experience it again if I don't want to. Um, so yeah, a bit of a bit of an odd time on the PlayStation. Looking at kind of various things I can then stream and play. And um, a Playtale Requiem is one of the um, basic tier. Uh, one of the three free games that you get through the basic tier yeah. so i will start that up at some point but i was more nice. in the mood for something a bit more actiony than kind of mm. dour and fucking dark um, <laughs> god of war yeah. ragnarok yeah. might become at some yeah. point but um yeah. but yeah a plague tale was kind of like i'm not in the mood for this it's dark enough outside already yeah um, yeah because i remember that was your game of the year one year wasn't it i think so, it was um... yeah the first one yeah was that 2019? And uh, I was kept that? wanting to get around to it, playing it. Yeah. Mm. I kept wanting to get around to playing it, and then the pandemic happened, and it's like, I don't want to play a plague game, but a plague. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. During a plague. And yet I played The Last of Us Part Two. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was like, this is a bit too much. Mm. These rats eating my face. But yeah, the, the, the start of that game is incredible, the first one. Yes. Um, very strong opening. Yeah, it really is. Really That's is. as far as I got. <laughs> That's probably again, like Proteus. That's probably all you need. Um, no, nah, it's 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 on the it's on the backlog. Well, see, this is this is then what made me start to think about the the topic, which we do every year, looking mm. forward at games that we want to play. But actually, I've got this uh, this kind of list of things, and a lot of them are kind of backlog games. Um, mm -hmm. So I've got uh, uh, God of War Ragnarok, which I'd like to play all of final fantasy 16 uh armored core 6 um jedi survivor spider-man 2 you know a few of the bigger games that kind of came out last year uh, uh which i just never got to but i thought oh again one from your list lucy chance of sanar as well uh, mm -hmm. um and and cocoon are on my my list of things to try and get to um in the next couple of months before mm -hmm. lots and lots of things start to come out um but i just wondered if anyone had any kind of anything at all that they're really looking forward to um coming up over the next six months sort of to a year really Silk song doesn't exist so no i don't even know what's coming out this year in I was truth and honesty literally googling what the hell's coming out i mean it's it it, it you could probably uh, find like a games radar or something like that article maybe yeah, which okay. might tell yeah. you like, has the next an article three and months of stuff coming Dawn, out potentially Dawn has one but it's not loading very quickly yeah i think they have like uh i can't remember i think it was on the newsletter like the games we're most looking forward to in 2024 mm. wait what um, there's a 
I think I skimmed one of them. I was just like, I don't know know what any of these games are. All the new video games launched in 2024. This is Polygon. Yeah, this is too much. Um, Is it Hunt? Skull and Bones. (laughs) So, Skull and Bones isn't going to come out. That's a lie. Come on, that game doesn't really exist. (laughs) So, uh, I mean, Apollo Justice Ace Attorney trilogy on new platforms. Okay. This renovated, as Capcom's description says, trilogy includes its first Apollo Justice games. Oh, there's that Prince of Persia game that's coming out this month. Yes. yes. That looks... I didn't play all three Ace Attorney J- games. I liked them. I was going to say, what's Apollo Justice? I know Ace Attorney, I but I'm not... The I... name of the... Uh... Apollo Creed Sun. <laughs> uh, I believe... <laughs> I don't actually know why it's called Apollo Justice. It's like their division or something. But like they're the three Phoenix Wright games. Right. Oh yeah, that's okay. Suicide Squad game. I'm sure Ideal's looking forward to that. Ah, oh, that thing was awful. <laughs> oh god. We actually had never been on the same podcast talking about it. I think. I don't. Are we, we never... are we allowed to? I can't remember whether the NDNA said we were allowed to talk about stuff from the Alpha or not. I don't yeah, remember. Who knows? It's bad. Traversal's yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Um, that's fine. There, you can't NDA me that. That's too broad. I didn't like it. Yeah, um, I agree. You agree that I didn't like it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there's, there's looking at this list. There's nothing. Uh, it will just be a case of like something that just comes out of left field, like well, Chance like, of Sinatra. I'm interested in, but I still oh, haven't yeah. finished FF Seven Revive, whatever it was called, mm. remake, remake. Mm. Thank you. It seems um, like a lot of the big games came out last year. Uh, this this may be a I don't know, and like a I, bumper year. I, want, I would replay Alone in the Dark this year. I don't think I want to play the remake. I don't oh, right, think yeah, I yeah. care about the remake. Uh, Dragon's Dogma oh. one I didn't get around to, but was always near go. my list. Two the Rise is... of the Golden Idol. Uh, That's oh, what I'm looking forward to. What is Princess Peach Showtime? Uh, the, they're making Peach a Princess game. Peach game, yeah. Like, what do you? Does anyone know anything more than this? I, I don't think they had much information. I think I remember it being revealed, but I don't think there was is much. It, uh, is it like a second quarter game? Maybe Nintendo are getting a bit better at going. Here's some more information about the game that's coming out really, really soon. Yeah, they'll probably it, talk Anger about Foot? it. Mm. Have you guys played the Angerfoot demo yet? Yeah, yeah. I've still right. got it installed. Yeah, Angerfoot Anger <laughs> is on my list. Great. That is one of the games that uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to. If yeah. that actually comes out, I'll be very happy. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Um... Um, God, there's so many of these bland-looking bland things. <laughs> I mean, video games. Um, I mean, I've also got so to stay with Devolve. I've got Plucky Squire on there as well. Yeah, yeah, um, which yeah. looks really good. It's like storybook. Uh, mm-hmm. game where they, they come out of the, 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 the story and can kind of navigate mm-hmm. around the, the real world, or at least the um, sort of the 3D world that mm-hmm. they come out of the book from. So that one's looking looking good. Baby uh, Steps, that oh, Foddy okay. game, that looks <laughs> that interesting. Looks and the I want to know one. what... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just want to know what that is. Um, I mean, the screenshot they have on that polygon article is <laughs> yeah. the person stepping um, forward in two boots on it. Bench. Mm. Uh, there's um, a country I game coming say, out. I don't um, know. That could go either way. It could be very bad or actually pretty good. A which? So. A what game? Sorry. A, a new Contra. Oh. Opera- Operation Galuga. Yeah. Um, the art style's horrific, but it could I might be have good. to push through an Elden Ring because I might want to play the DLC. Yeah, that's still not been kind of announced, but I think it's uh, um, it's well, on the little... list, right? But like, yeah, that... yeah, they don't know when it's coming out, but I think something might have mistakenly suggested it's early this year. Um, I can't remember something from last year. Um, I'd say Little Nightmares Three, but I haven't finished. Well, I haven't even started the second one. No, I didn't start the second one. Uh, that's on my list. Oh, The Wolf Among Us Two, if that ever comes out. Mm, so. Mm. Yeah, um, the, I, I mean, one of the, some of these may never come out. Uh, so. And again, one of the oh, big Super ones. Super Mario, I, I would play the remake. The remake. I've heard really good things about it, and never oh, played really. the original. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's yeah. nothing that jumps out at me except for like, yeah, DLCs, remakes, things that like I might play because they're there, but also I have the giant backlog. 
Yeah, and like, absolutely. What I got from our discussion last episode was like, I also want to play some of these games you guys really liked last year, and mm. those are way more appealing to me than mm -hmm. this like list of games. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That makes sense, especially I think uh, for games that aren't coming out in the next couple of months as well, which we don't know a huge amount about. Mm. You know, I think my list or the games that are kind of on my list, a lot of them are stuff that is coming out in the next couple of months, which we've had a couple of trailers for, and we know that little bit more kind of about uh, yeah. things like Pacific Drive, um, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, um, mm. the the one which we don't really need to know very much about, but everyone's going to play, will be Hades 2 as well, which mm. is, I think, going to be this year, potentially. Mm. Um, so but... I didn't say that because from what I've seen, there isn't enough hard data that it is going to come out mm. Mm. it'd be interesting if they did as they did with hades and it goes into early access somewhere whether again mm. it's through epic or something like that um and it's you know not anyone's game of the year this year as an early access title but it is everyone's game of the year for, for sort of 2025 um when everyone plays kind of like the full release but more than likely everyone will play that game in early access because they know what the first game was was like um but yeah, I'd, I'd give that one a shot i think i think i had an overall good enough time with the first one yeah to give the second one a try mm, absolutely um mm -hmm. one which I, I i knew nothing about um which i've seen more recently is a game called rise of the ronin which <clears throat> looks almost not quite ghost of tsushima but a bit of a kind of mix with a bit of assassin's creed maybe um so like a bit a bit more of a bigger kind of budget game um but no ben i think this is ghost of tsushima <laughs> <laughs> um is it is it team ninja who are making it um and and i i like i like i like feudal era japan uh, and mm. orient setting uh for games I, I, I love action games obviously so this kind of as soon as i saw this i'm like how do i know nothing about this game where has this come from and i think again it's another one which might be kind of first maybe early second quarter uh as a release um but yeah that's uh that's definitely on my list of i gonna I'll, yeah. I'll play that i'll be another i'll be a fucking samurai again cool <laughs> yeah uh, yeah, Ghost of Tsushima Two looks good. <laughs> you, you you could put those games side by side, and I think it's the same thing. I'd be like, it'd be the Spider Man meme. It's like, mm. yeah. And then when Ghost of Tsushima comes out in in two years, uh, Ghost of Tsushima Two yeah. comes out in two I'll be years like, time. Didn't that happen? Yes, they would just yeah. leap they would leapfrog each other constantly with <laughs> yeah. with iterations and, and, and sequels to those games. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I think the only other one, which probably isn't going to be this year, it might be because they've started advertising it, is Light uh, No Fire, which is the new oh. um, Hello Games game. So the people who made um, No Man's Sky. Yeah. Obviously, my No Man's Sky resurgence last year. Um, suddenly, this gets kind of announced. Sort of, I think it was a Game Awards announcement. Um, and it's kind of, here is an Earth... But it is the size of the Earth, and you can traverse the entire uh, Earth. You know that okay. kind of in a fantasy esque kind of. It almost looks a little bit Final Fantasy fourteen esque with bunny people and stuff, um, <laughs> and, and you know mouse guards and shit, and people can ride dragons and. Isn't that just and Final Fantasy fourteen? Like, it, 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 it might just be Final Fantasy fourteen, but just yeah. on one massively traversable planet with a group. I don't know. Again, is that a game where there's one instance and there's 20 people who inhabit that instance is it more like no man's sky where you drop in and out of different instances and different places is it not quite about discovery as much as it is about more of an actiony kind of thing there's not oh. not again don't know much about it um apart from it looks very good and i really like no man's sky so yeah. yes i i remember the game i'm interested in mm. that i kickstarted Ooh. and that's um is it the sh what's the Shadowgate uh, game that's coming out this year? Uh, what's it called? Oh, I don't Is know. Just called Beyond Shadowgate. Mm. Uh, Bringing back yes, Shadowgate. Yes. Yeah, that I'm looking forward to, very much so. Mm. 
I was tempted uh, by their Kickstarter, and they have like they're just printing NES cards, and I was like, mm. I don't have the money to pay seventy pounds plus shipping for whatever this is, mm. you know, for a. Oh, imagine if it worked on NES. <laughs> but it does. It's just it's just a little replica card. And I was like, yeah. No, Lucy, resist. Do I need more things on my shelves? No, I don't, but it looks so pretty. <laughs> and I want it. But yeah, no. the game will do. The, di the digital download yeah. code will yeah. do. But yeah, that I'm looking forward to. Cool. That should be, by the sounds of it, the first half of 2024. So. Okay. Brilliant. Cool. Yeah, um, that, I'm looking that... forward to a, <laughs> a game that is basically from 30 years ago. <laughs> From and a game ago, that is never going to come out. Time. Yeah, and a game that's never going to come out, and the rise of the Golden Idol. That's about good, it. good. Mm -hmm. um, cool, and that brings us nicely then to our last segment for the episode. Uh, Lucy, uh, I yes. hand over to you. Yes, I'm just going to go to my office. Ooh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my knees can't go anymore. So. <laughs> um, what I've decided to do. Because uh, for our trial runs, mm. um, I said what kind of like uh, time frame, what era, what console mm -hmm. generation mm -hmm. these games are. I won't say that until, unless you lot are struggling and need narrowing okay. it down and a few more pointers. So, oh, yeah, well, I'm not it's a mystery. So, have you lot decided whether you want to work together or go head to head? Oh, I thought it was. That's how we were gonna do um, uh, some sort of some competition. Yeah. Oh, there we go. I was gonna yeah. quack. How'd you get all these uh, things? How'd you get all these silly things? Uh, <laughs> we can do competition. There we go. No, my soundboard opens up in in the screen, so people on the video will see just the edge of my soundboard. Oh. Annoyingly. Oh, no, we don't have to do that. I thought that would be a way. I mean, we could also just yell it out. <laughs> <laughs> sure your air horn i'm quack uh or we could just yell it out but i have a feeling well either it's, probably... it's gonna be just a clean sweep or we might be like neck and neck on yelling things it's probably good to have a buzzer i think mm. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part wow. is i think I, I know how to make this like record onto the audacity but i haven't sent anyone the instructions oh yes so... yes so no one will get uh, that we're doing air horns absolutely case. Um, going forward, it will, but you guys are missing on the uh, air horns. Yeah. Except you guys. <laughs> right. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, Lucy. I, I think. A little I, worried swear, about that. I oh, swear you... that was like freezing my computer. <laughs> I was just like, uh, so the, the big thing for you, Lucy, is <laughs> that is quieter than that. So you may have to look for the icon rather yeah, than. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll try and keep looking, so. So, so hold on, what what's Ben's buzz? He's doing the air horn. Okay, I'm doing okay, quack. and you're doing the quack, right? Um, yeah. Just think of Untitled Goose Game. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's exactly. I was like, oh, I gotta be the quack. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Where's, uh, we can figure out a better version of this works. Okay, game number. <laughs> game number Did you one. Trigger finger. <laughs> Game number one. Tanner, Maverick. Oh, oh no, sorry. <laughs> That's not his name. That does sound like a video game name, Tanner Maverick. No, it's like, no, but it's Tanner, comma, Maverick Undercover Cop, a.k.a. The Blank, infiltrates a worldwide high-performance car theft ring. The high-speed chases and the shootouts take... The club? Oh, the shootouts, damn it, I'm out. Mm. Now, sh do we disqualify him? Or do we... No, I think you can still guess. Yeah. Even if you get the wrong answer, you yeah, can still guess. Yeah, absolutely. Alright, so, okay. high-speed chase, mm -hmm. shootouts. Yes. Uh, the high-speed chases and the shootouts take action across three continents as Tanner uses any means necessary oh, to take... 
Uh, <laughs> any you means you know the name of any of these protagonists in these games? So, like, I think that's that's a red herring. That's why I, I thought his I, name was Tanner Maverick. Yeah. This one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one. Uh, uh, the, 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 this gets well. I, I I just picked up the games. I didn't look at the yeah, flavor no, text. Mm-hmm. I picked up a few extra so, just in case we can't get high any. High but... speed heists and shootouts is what we heard. Yes, we still got quite a lot more to read though. So. Oh, oh wow! Fingers on buses. Um, uh. Shootouts take action across three continents as Tanner uses any means necessary to take his criminal counterparts down. Okay, here are the bullet points. 25 plot-integrated missions, driving games, and free roaming modes include. Oh. Three meticulously recreated cities with over 156 miles of roads. Miami, Nice, and Istanbul. Over 70 completely destructible vehicles, such as cars, bikes, trucks, and boats. I don't know what this is at all. Yeah, boats as well. <laughs> Real-world weapons, including handguns, machine guns, and grenade... I like that. And grenade launch. <laughs> <laughs> Not a grenade launcher or grenade launchers. And grenade launcher. <laughs> Innovative in-game frill cam. Plus director mode to make your own movies. Featuring the acting talents oh. of Michael Madsen, Ving Rames, Michelle Rodriguez, Mickey Rourke, and Iggy Pop. Oh my god, what is this game? I don't know this is right. all. <laughs> um, I was uh, like, oh, uh, okay. Is it like... Our, um, like Something, I'll, I'll, st- mm, something, I'll start no. dropping in some context something clues. we know, there. but like a You'll sequel. know it. it. It is a sequel. It, it may oh. even be a Series? prequel. Oh, is it like... Is it like... Yep, is there it we like go. Ben? Driver 3 or something like that. Yeah! I was going to say Driver 3, but I was like, there's no way Mickey Rourke was in Driver... Mickey Rourke was in Drive 3R? Oh, I'm annoyed. I didn't... I I don't remember that. I don't remember that at all. Or this game much, really. I don't remember Drive 3R, technically. Well done, man. What was Driver Driver 2? was Driver San Francisco, wasn't it? I think. No, no, because there, there was an actual driver too. Yeah, but uh-huh. I think it was driver, oh, driver two, drive three R, and then San Francisco right. came years later. I think. Right. Okay. I have a point okay. for it. Okay. <laughs> That's not how this works. Um, <laughs> okay. Game number two. Oh, I'm an. Mm, yep. Tan- Classic- Wait, Tanner. What was it? Tanner. His name was just Tanner. I he thought was he was a maverick. Kind of maverick. Under, yeah, he was a maverick undercover guy. Yeah, Tanner yeah. the maverick. Oh, all right. <laughs> Versus yeah, maverick the uh, Tanner. Um, yeah. He's in Skyrim. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, that's a good one. <laughs> right, game number two. Ah, oh, classic FPS, slicked up and fine tuned to the brink of madness. An instant classic with the best multiplayer mode of any console title. Oh, wow. Bold. Uh, yeah. Um, the critically acclaimed Blank is back. This time it's bigger, better, faster, and more furious than anything you've played before. Mm. It's not the orange box, is it? No. Battle your... Your... It's not the orange box. Uh, battle your way through nine time traveling episodes. Each with their... Time split is two. Yeah. Oh, well done, man. I was never going to get that. It says 199 on the cover. <laughs> it also has <laughs> Sharpie all across the plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Someone, instead of putting on a sticker to show the discount price, they just wrote just on wrote the... it. On. <laughs> nice. Time splitters. I like the first one's really good. I really like Time Splitters. Is it? Yeah. I think, uh, was that a GameCube game, the original? Maybe. Uh, I mean, I'll look that up. I'm not sure. Never played it. Um, 
Right. Game number three. Oh dear, you got to claw uh, your way back if Ben gets this. He's won game, the round. PS2 and Xbox. Okay. Mm. You've right. lost this if if you don't get it, Dale. So lost this. Here we go. <laughs> Dale was bored. <laughs> This is your chance to really take control. Get creative and have fun in a different blank every day. Question is, have you got what it takes? Can you keep hundreds of visitors happy? Taking on this challenge means you'll have to not only design the perfect blank, you'll have to build an... a deal. Oh, it's not Theme Hospital, is it? No. No. Uh, theme ben. park? No. Oh. You're both on the right track. Mm. Theme blank. <laughs> just All not, right. uh, maybe. Roller coaster tycoon. <laughs> yeah, just what I was no. thinking as well. <laughs> A new one, are you going to say that? <laughs> no. Uh, okay. Um, let me see. Design. Design and construct your own virtual blank park using rides and attractions from the real parks. Manage. Build a successful park by keeping your visitors happy. Mm. Play. Play in free play mode or game mode. Good. Rewards. Park success is rewarded with new rides and attractions including the coveted Best Blank Park Manager Award. So, I think what the context clue here is design and construct your own virtual blank park using rides and attractions from the real parks. Uh, oh, bollocks. Jurassic Park Evolution. Incorrect. Oh, when I say real, I mean Zoo real. Tycoon. I mean real, not fake. Believe sure. Jurassic yeah. Park, even though you know it is, Jurassic Park is real. Chesington World of Adventures Manager Five. <laughs> Close, but no dice. <laughs> I, zoo. It's not Zoo Tycoon. It's not real. This is a PC game. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sound politically correct to me. Uh, I don't know these games. Mm. I know yeah, Planet Coaster. On Windows 2000 and XP. Real parks. Sorry. I don't, know. I, don't know. I don't know one that, that allows you to go in real parks, I don't think. Let me give you a clue. Okay. A deal was losing. I was thinking, yes. how do I lay up a deal? What does a deal mm. like even more than Ben? That Ben also likes a lot. Lego? Some Lego park tycoon? Lego? <laughs> What's the fuck? <laughs> Lego, Lego, Lego Land, the ride. <laughs> What's the name DM. of the real life parks? <laughs> Lego. <laughs> Lego. I don't Land. know what these things are called. I Legoland. Know, I said Legoland, didn't I? <laughs> I I don't think we can give you that point, uh, but yeah. it means that you're still in the I game. I had no idea that was a game. <laughs> oh, did you not? No, never. I've never seen that before. I remember. Um, was this the one? Did I get Legoland and a uh, computer didn't run it, or was that like which one was it? That might have been Lego City. I can't remember. Mm. But yes, Legoland is a game. Nice. Um, right. Fourth game. <sighs> oh, I can't wait to do this one. Um, <laughs> just, I'm really wondering what that says. Anyway, we'll do this one. Uh, game number four. I can't believe Legoland is a game. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to do this. PC only game? Gonna, or was I'm it just a PC version? Um. Don't know. I, I think it's only on PC. Um, so it doesn't it doesn't exist. Yeah, fake PC game. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. No, I want to save that till the end. Even if Ben wins, I'm doing that as a bonus anyway. Oh, yeah, no, okay. we're playing yeah. all five rounds. Yeah. So. <laughs> Look, we okay. know that Ben's probably going to win every week. Whoa! 
Why? <laughs> you. These are console games, primarily from the time where I didn't play video games mm. and never owned a console. Yeah, but you should know that Michelle Rodriguez was in Driver Free. So. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I will. I will. Have my deathbed rue <laughs> the fact that That's... I thought of Driver and didn't say it. And the worst part is, if I just said Driver because of the mm -hmm. stupid way they put the three, you'd probably you would probably accept be Driver. right. Yeah. 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 Uh, but that's, you know, pop cultural knowledge that Michael Madsen is in Driver Free. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they um, literally were getting the Fast and Furious and Heat and I don't know where Mike, what's it? Ro Mickey Kill Rourke, Bill I don't know why was, he, what Because I think it was game. 2004. Mm, and Iggy Pop. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, Iggy, yeah. yeah. But anyway. <laughs> right. Game number four. Mm. As the enemy evolves, so must you. Oh, shit. Right, I'm supposed to have a finger on a Fingers on buttons. Uh, okay. What if simple algorithm algorithm algorithmic algorithmic code could crash the Asian stock market, black out New York, or take control of ballistic missiles? Horrible. In two thousand and seven, this has become a reality. Wow! Yeah, it, it genuinely happened. Uh, only one person has the key to the code, and you must find them at any cost, or the chain of chaos will become unstop unstoppable. You are blank. You are a blank. New close combat kills, including inverted neck break. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, operational with a commando knife. The ultimate stealth equipment. Uh, F uh, is that a... SC-20K Assault Rifle includes shotgun. Wait, this is in the box art? Yeah, we can invert the inverted net break. Uh, ben. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it was called. 007 Nightfire or something like that. No. Mm. Not 007. Team up with a friend in cooperative mode. Critically acclaimed versus mode returns. Players 1 to 2. <laughs> HDTV 480p. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Splinter Cell something. Yeah, I mean, I was trying to figure out what the something was. Yeah. Splinter Cell. Uh, something. Splinter Cell. Death. AI. <laughs> I don't know what no. that would be called. Um, Splitter Cell no. Black Ops TM Tom Clancy wrote this maybe question mark. No. Damn it. If you lot thought really hard and... Uh, it was just Splinter Cell 1. There are more Splinter Cells. Oh, it has loads. Yeah. So, whoever gets it. Splinter Cell 2. Splinter Cell 3. Splinter Cell 4. Splinter Cell 1. Splinter Cell 2? No! Splinter Cell X, Chaos Reigns. <laughs> no! But you said a word. That's all that <gasps> Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Yes. <laughs> Fuck off! I, I actually knew Chaos was in one of the names, I just couldn't remember it. I didn't even think about how I was just laying up Ben. I, I tried to st stress the chaos in mm. the... Uh... Yeah, no. Chaos, what theory? Mm. Yeah, just. Um... Rainbow Six Siege. <laughs> I love the inverted neck break. Yeah. <laughs> was like, oh. nice. um... uh, I want to meet the interns who have to write these box arts. Yeah. Because there's clearly not yeah, someone good. higher up because these are bad. I We need to do this one. I, I'm right. generally curious what this one yeah. is. Let's go. So, yes, Ben wins this week, but um, yeah. we've still got the fifth game. This... Hmm. Um. Okay. Unlock the code. Stealth, adventure, combat, and puzzle solving all come together in the ultimate blank experience. New adventures, puzzles, and locations that go beyond the film or book. Ooh. Unravel challenging clues hidden in the works of blank 
explore world famous locations like the blank Westminster Abbey <laughs> and blank. Um... I think the others are giveaways. The game has just begun. Now you can live in the mysterious, ever expanding world of blank TM. <laughs> With this all-new action-packed adventure, I bet it is, uh, you'll encounter new plot twists and clues as you try to stay one he- one step ahead of an enemy that will stop. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? <laughs> <laughs> no. At first, I uh, thought it was maybe a Harry Potter thing. That's a, that's a good educated guess, though. Mm. Harry Potter. Hmm. Westerners are I mean, happy it, and really yeah, stuff gets rid of that. I think Harry Potter is also a good educated guess because it was something that was very much in the zeitgeist around when Harry Potter was famous. Right, yeah. Um, but it's not mm. Harry Potter. Um, different mm. series. Uh, where was I? And clues as you try to stay one hep- step ahead of an enemy that will stop at nothing to seize an epic secret that's been locked away for centuries. Hmm. Film slash book. Dan mm. Brown's The Da Vinci Code, the film, the book, the game. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Well done. <laughs> that I didn't know a... that existed. Uh, neither did I. I that was just oh, a real guess. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. Wow. <laughs> yes, because that is. That's very... insane. Yeah, there's a game. I, I, in, in no possible world would I would I have thought that that book spawned a game. It must. No, uh, no, 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 no. Well done. Because it's still got security. Still protection. completely um, sealed. Yeah. Up. Nice. If I I'm open this, say I this. if I like lose this season box. of whatever we're calling this, stump the jump at this point, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, no. I will play that game. <laughs> That's the that dream game. I would love it. Five yeah. hours. That's what I'll do if I lose. Unless we get something like the Saw, the video game, I don't think there's going to be anything that mm. might top out that. That is absolutely, um, absolutely. Yeah, oh, so actually, yeah. one. I still think maybe it's uh, <laughs> the the winner picks the lo- of the games that we've missed. Mm-hmm. Well, the winner then, picks something that the loser has to stream. Then just right on one of your walls. The Da Vinci Code, etch it in with a knife. The Da Vinci Code, the book, the game. Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code, the book, the game, the movie. No, the movie, the game. TM. TM. Yeah. Well, Uh, it's it's Dan Brown's (laughs) Da Vinci Code. (laughs) Yeah, this is when video games were not called Sony's, Marvel's, the Spider Man's. This Mm. is just called the Da Vinci Code. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, TM on the back of the box. This this is a good place to round out the episode. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I sorry. I, know, what did you say? I have to read this. I have hmm? to read this. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, no. Sorry, <laughs> I was just saying. <laughs> sorry, I'm being very dumb. <laughs> um. Good. Good. Let's come back to beers then. Is there anyone Black that wants to say anything to about them. their beers? <laughs> uh, it's refreshing still. I think. <laughs> <laughs> You're still drinking it. Not like I'm going back for more and be like, mm, mm, this is mm, tasty. Yeah, fair, um, fair. Uh, yeah. I am. I think this beer I shouldn't be drinking is very good, and I'm sad that I won't. I mean, it's kind of a silver lining because I won't be able to get more of it anyways because it's sure. from Calgary. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's very good. Um, so, North American slash Alberta listeners, take seek out. The Growlery. Also, I, next time I'm in town, I'm going to look for more from the Growlery because mm. this is... I think what I liked most about it was it was very much a beer. It gave me just enough of the... the like I said, there was that little bit of lactose that gave it the Vietnamese coffee, but it still was a coffee stout, so it wasn't being too much on the sweetened condensed milk, which is what makes a Vietnamese coffee interesting. So in that sense, it wasn't perfectly replicating, but it was instead just a very good coffee stout with, with the notion of that without mm-hmm. betraying what it was trying to be. Nice. Okay. Uh, and the um, misheard lyric was, like I said, a, a really interesting um, slight spin on a quintessential Nipa. Again, I really like that both of these were at their hearts doing what the beer was type is, but in an interesting way that made them unique. 
Good. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. No, that Vietnamese coffee one. Just. Mm. I could. You could have not been selfish and saved it and given it to me, but <laughs> you and your dirty vegan but, breaking Lucy, habits. I, I already have a beer on my fridge yes. waiting for you, yes. and we haven't yes. found the time. Yeah, I need to head up to uh, the northeast. Mm. Up the tune. There are good breweries in Newcastle. Also, yes, we could meet partway and go to Manchester and have a fucking ball. I've been wanting to go back to Manchester. Mm. I've been since 2019. You've never been. You've never been? No. <gasps> I've never been out in Manchester. We should do a tank I've been lots, but only to watch football. Mm. Yeah. I, mean, no. that also... I mean, it's obviously changed a fair bit since I lived there, but I still know it by night. Not by oh. day, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. by night. Nice. But yeah, I know. You, like, I'm really annoyed that it, and like land is a like... game. Sorry, I'm not. <laughs> what? Yeah. You, you also, that your wrong. uncle owned it at some point. Yeah, um, this game is my favorite. I like we have barely scratched the surface. There may be weirder stuff than the Da Vinci Code. I don't know. So oh, sure. yeah, it will be a fun year. But yeah, like track and cloud war. Like you walk two minutes from Piccadilly and you're there. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I think we should we should organise a trip, definitely. Mm. Um, yeah, let's, let's yes. tanked up on the road. For should today, <laughs> that's it from us. Um, thank you everybody for joining us. Go to outoflives.net uh, uh, Hit us up on the socials at TankedUpCast uh, I'm at Nova underscore 47 Adel is at the Omni and Lucy is Juicy Loose 9. Um, and they are not the beers that we've drank and some beers we have drank, <laughs> the games that we have played and some games that we definitely haven't played as well. Um, but for this week, thank you for joining us. We've been tagged up. Goodbye. Uh, bye. bye. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. www.outoflives.net